Welcome back to our program, the last part of Between the Lines. Today we've been talking with Shane Anderson. He's been talking to us about private education, Christian education, what we can do to make it better. And we want to move in the direction of parents being involved in the development of their children. And certainly there has to be something that they can do. Absolutely. You know, education is something that we often kind of use as a term generically to purely mean what happens at school. But the truth is, is that education is something that happens to a child every single moment of the day. Experience uh, has taught us, certainly within Seventh-day Adventism, and I believe other school systems too, education of a child is a three-legged stool, home, church, and the school. When those three legs are strong and sturdy, children come out on the other side very well prepared for life. Parents, for their part of the school, you know, we have our kids at home for, what, you know, six, seven years, and then they go off to school, where now someone else will have them for the majority of their waking hours. If parents can do the absolute best they can, to inculcate the values that they want their children to have prior to school. Schools will have that much easier of a task in, in, in helping their child to grow, and the child will have a great start to be in that school. So taking care of business at home with their kids ahead of time. I think secondly, parents should never stop being advocates for their kids' education, and good schools will welcome parents' input. Excellent schools will welcome that input. So, so does that mean that is the transverse of that if the school that I'm sending my child to, for an example, mm -hmm. is not open to suggestions, they're resistant, they're always giving excuses, does that mean I need to kind of rethink my position? It may well, uh, because what, we, what at least what I found in my research in preparing for the book is that uh, schools that were doing poorly generally cut communication down. It's almost like they felt, well, if we can just control the outflow of information, then they, they won't find out. Parents won't find out about the negative things. And what I found in my research is precisely the opposite. Schools of excellence, school with a vision for the future, they are open to the suggestions of their parents and make parents active partners in the education of their children. Cooperation is essential. So as you mentioned, the stool, the three-legged stool, can the school help compensate for weaknesses at home? If there's a broken family or the child is experiencing trouble at home, can the school help compensate in that partnership? In, in my research, and I'm sure this is open to debate, uh, but in my research, in my opinion, that's a, it's a very difficult thing to overcome. If, if one of the three legs is malfunctioning, the best that, that can happen is compensation at the other ones. Now, some schools, admittedly, for instance, if a child comes from a poor home, if, there, if there's difficulty behaviorally at home, if it, uh, uh, for instance, I grew up in a home uh, where my mother and father uh, eventually went their separate ways. Uh, my school was uh, small enough and had teachers that could spend enough time with me that actually I found a second home mm -hmm. uh, in Christian education. It was yeah. like a safety zone for it you. It was. It really was. Uh, that's not always possible but sometimes it can be compensated for, depending on the environment of the school. I guess it just goes to show how important parents are and exactly. how important you know, sure. each one of those three legs can be. So let's go to the second leg, the school. Or is it the church? Is church number two? Oh, I, don't, I don't know if there's a numbering or not. Uh, <laughs> certainly chronologically, parents get them first. Uh, uh, the, the, the school itself, my, my research seems to indicate that if a school commits itself to being a school of ex excellence, Rising water tends to raise all the ships. Uh, it is true it's difficult. If you want to know the heaviest partner in this three, three-legged three dance, I don't know, do stools dance? I'm not right. sure. But uh, the church, uh, at least in the Adventist system, being the constituent, the main giver of funds, is often the one with the most weight in that relationship. If a church is not supportive of their school, it's difficult. But if the, if the school can say, you know what, we have been going downhill, we've had our declines in enrollment, but here's how we're going to turn the tide and I give some suggestions for how to do that in the book, many times churches will say, okay, you're serious now. All right, all right, let's get some extra money. Let's get some extra horsepower. Let's bring this thing up. And that comes back to the vision. That comes back to a part really of does. what you were saying at the beginning, really where does. if there's a vision there, the, the donors will increase their support and there will be an increase in the number of donors. There is, there is. You know, we were created in the image of God. Every child is a child of God, whether they realize it or not. It's, it's a sacred trust that God has given to parents and by extension to churches and to schools. When we fully realize that indeed we can make children, help children become contributing members to society, people who love the Lord, people that are good citizens, that contribute to the good of a nation, I tell you, when that vision gri grips you, uh, you know, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Now the church, what part do they play in that? Because some people are not church attending. Correct. So what should they look for in a church 
where a school is attached to or connected to it, even if not you know, geographically or logistically, right there, they can at least say, I know this church's influence is there. What type of influence should be there? What should they be looking for? Yeah, it's an excellent question <clears throat> because I, I believe that Christian education is for everyone. I think that everyone can benefit from it, whether their parents profess to have religious affiliation or not. Here, here's one of the reasons why. Uh, there's a big $10 word card called postmodernism, uh, which simply means that truth is relative. This is a mindset that pervades most of the Western world, including North America. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have my truth, for instance, you say you have your truth, and uh, if they're the exact opposite, postmodernism says that's okay. Everybody has their own truth and we don't try to impinge on it. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, is that nobody really lives that way. You can't live, <coughs> excuse me, as though truth were completely relative. When you're looking for a school, look for one that teaches solid values, mm -hmm. that teaches uh, uh, it's good, it's much better to be generous than to steal, uh, teaches that faithfulness is better than uh, unfaithfulness, uh, teaches that, that, uh, uh, that there is truth, that there is honor, that there is dignity and respect that every human being has. Even if your family's not function, functioning at that level, it's better to say, yes, I want definitely. these values instilled in my children. That's right. So if you, see, if you see a school and there's a church attached to it, Talk to the pastor. Talk to the elders that are there. You know, tell me what you believe. Tell me what this is about. Uh, are you going to Are you going to help to shape my child to be a person of honor and of dignity and respect? Can your school help me do that? Look for that. Right. It's a higher level of education when you want your child to get character training and life skills. That's um, definitely education of value for sure. It is. I want you to know that I've really appreciated this dialogue today. I think it's been constructive, it's helpful, helps us to be focused because sometimes we look for schools to do things maybe that they can do and then other times they can't do. And it's best for us to be able to evaluate what those things are. Shane, thank you so much for being with us Good today. Good to talk to you. Thank you for having Great me. Great book. And I want you to know that we want you to take more seriously, if you're not already, the investment of education in your children. God bless. This program was brought to you by the Hope Channel Network. Thanks to the generous support of viewers like you. In the United States and Canada, call 1-888-4-HOPE-TV. That's 888-446-7388.